Well, good morning and welcome to Ashland Place United Methodist Church. We are so glad that you have chosen to worship with us this morning. This morning we are continuing our sermon series through May that we are calling Lessons from Lockdown. Um, you will find that this week, this season, uh, this season of stay-at-home orders and social distancing has invited our imaginations to create. And we, we pray that you will find this worship service will be both engaging and meaningful. And we hope that you will find that our imagining and dreaming is spirit-led. And now let us continue to prepare ourselves, our hearts and minds for worship by pausing a moment to simply breathe. Let us clear our minds of the stuff that has been distracting us, the things left undone, the things that lie ahead. For this time, let us focus on God and God alone. So let us take a deep breath in and let it out. Let us breathe in faith and exhale our fears and our distractions. Let us pray. God, our Redeemer, you have delivered us from the power of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of your Son. Grant that as by his death he has recalled us to life, so by his continual presence in us he may raise us to eternal joy. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We invite you to join with us now in our hymn of praise, Love Divine, All Loves Excelling. Scriptures are read and your word is proclaimed. 
we may hear what you are saying to us today. Our Psalter this morning is taken from Psalm 66. Hear now a reading of the Psalms. Bless our God, O people. Let the sounds of his praise be heard, who has kept us among the living, and has not let our feet slip. For you, O God, have tested us. You have tried us as silver is tried. You brought us into the net. You laid burdens on our backs. You let people ride over our heads. We went through fire and through water. Yet you have brought us out to a spacious place. Come and hear, all you who fear God, and I will tell what he has done for me. I cried aloud to him, and he was extolled with my tongue. If I had cherished iniquity in my heart, the Lord would not have listened. But truly, God has listened. He has given heed to the words of my prayer. Blessed be God, because he has not rejected my prayer or removed his steadfast love from me. And this is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. As we enter into this time of prayer, I invite you to find in the bulletins the circle of concern. Remember to pray for these um, souls we have been praying for each week as they recuperate and gain healing from their illnesses and surgeries, and those who are continuing to grieve the loss of loved ones and change that we all are undergoing. I will um, let us have a moment of silent prayer, and then we'll lead us in the morning prayer, and we'll close with the Lord's Prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God, we are gathered at this time in many places, and we are entering into the quiet sanctuaries of our own hearts. Let each of us name and call on the one whose power over us is great and gentle, firm and forgiving, holy and healing. Lord, who created us, who sustains us, who calls us to live in peace, hear our prayers this day. Hear our prayer for those who put the welfare of others ahead of their own and give us hearts as generous as theirs. For doctors, nurses, technicians, and all those who care and tend to the needs of the hurting, the sick, and those recuperating from illness and surgery. Grant them peace. Grant them strength and perseverance. Lord, hear our prayer for those who give their lives in the service of others and accept the gift of their sacrifice. For the uniformed men and women who serve the public by taking the risk of being first responders, police officers, firefighters, paramedics, and those who come to place themselves between humanity and harm. Grant them all that they require for all that is called upon them. Lord, hear our prayer for all who have experienced change and loss, for all of us whose normal has been shattered by self-isolation, quarantine, closures, and stay-at-home orders, whose hearts and hopes are known to you. Grant us your vision and hope for the future even in the upsetting reality of a new and yet undetermined normal. Lord, help us to shape and make a world where we will lay down the arms of war and turn our swords into plowshares for a harvest of justice and peace. Even as the pandemic wages war across the globe, we still hear of violence and war from different corners of the world. Lord, let your spirit convict the hearts of world leaders and those who would disrupt peace 
to seek out peaceful resolutions. Let your resurrection and your shalom overcome the violence and death found in many homes, neighborhoods, and nations. Lord, comfort those who grieve the loss of their loved ones and let your healing be the hope in our hearts. For those among us who still feel the loss of loved ones near to us, of the sting of death, for the frailty of life, grant us strength and hope. Lord, hear our prayer this day. And in your mercy, answer us in the name of all that is holy. We pray these things through your Son, Jesus Christ, who teaches us to say as we pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Again, I want to thank you for choosing to worship with us this morning. It is through the generosity of Ashland Place United Methodist Church that we have been able to continue to offer worship and discipleship opportunities, even in this virtual world. I want to remind you of several opportunities that are available. There are two Sunday school classes that meet every Sunday morning. The Wesley class meets through Zoom, and the children's class will meet, meets through the children's um, Facebook page of Ashland Place United Methodist Church. We also have two virtual youth meetings that meet on Sunday evening and Wednesday evenings. And we are continuing to be, uh, offer our midweek offerings of the Tuesday evening pastor's Bible study and the midweek devotional on Wednesdays. You can um, receive any of these opportunities and gain access uh, to these uh, opportunities of discipleship by just contacting the church office and we'll include your email um, and, co and contact information so that you can be included. If you would like to support the ministries and programs of Ashland Place, we can receive your gifts through numerous means, through online giving, by texting or dropping a check in the mail or just drop, dropping it by the church office. And we thank you for your generosity. And now let us pray over our gifts. Almighty God, we thank you for all with which you have blessed us and we return to you what is yours so that we may continue to work with you to grow your kingdom of heaven here on earth. Some say he was an outlaw, that he roamed across the land with a band of unschooled ruffians and a few old fishermen. No one knew where he came from or exactly what he'd done. But they said it must have been something bad that kept him on the run. Some say he was a poet, that he'd stand upon the hill, that his Yes. Mm -hmm. 
Hey guys, it's Miss Amy, and I'm here with your children's moment on Philippians 4, verses 1 through 9, but I'm going to start by telling you something that you're probably not going to believe. When I was a little girl, I was quite an athlete. I played softball, and I played volleyball, and I ran track, and I loved it. But I had this softball coach that repeatedly would say to me, Amy, keep your eye on the prize. See, he believed that if I could focus, if I could visualize where I wanted to hit the ball and how far I wanted to hit that ball in that direction, that I would be able to do those things more likely than if I just willy-nilly swung the bat. And you know what? It worked. I became pretty accurate at where I wanted to hit the ball. Now, the reason that I tell you this is because the Apostle Paul in the book of Philippians, we find him in prison and he tells us this. Now, I can't think of a worse place to be than that, right? So he tells us this, you know what? I'm gonna rejoice and here's how you do that. Whatever is good, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about those things. You see, we've all kind of been on lockdown like Paul right now, right? We've all been sort of quarantined to our families and we find ourselves in a place where we are not necessarily as free to do the things that we want to do as we'd like to be. Um, but instead of thinking about what we can't have, we can change our perspective and we can think about the good in life. And that makes a big, big difference. Let me give you one last example. Have you ever been to a scary movie? Yeah? How did you feel when you came out of that, that movie? You felt afraid, right? Um, how about a sad movie? Certainly we've all been to those movies where we come, we watch this movie, we really connect to this main character, and then something really bad happens and we find ourselves 
so, so sad at the end. And that's a perfect example of what Paul is talking about. Because when we focus on sadness or when we focus on fear, then that's kind of how our brains are processing things. So this week, I want you to think, and I want you to tell your parents five noble, pure, wonderful, lovely things that you see in the world around you. And it will remind you that if you keep your eye on the prize, your perspective changes a whole lot. All right, guys, I love you. I'm praying for you. And I will see you here next week. Today, we continue in our series, Lessons from Lockdown. While we are all experiencing a lockdown of sorts with social distancing and staying away from others, we thought it would be timely to look at the four letters that Paul wrote while he was in prison, locked away. Last week, Sterling preached from Ephesians and talked about what it means to be together as one people as the body of Christ. So today, we will look at the letter to the Philippians, thought to be Paul's favorite church, to see what he has to say to them. So here now, a reading from Philippians chapter 1, verses 12 through 14, and chapter 4, verses 1 through 9. I want you to know, beloved, that what has happened to me has actually helped to spread the gospel, so that it may become known throughout the whole imperial guard and to everyone else that my imprisonment is for Christ. And most of the brothers and sisters, having been made confident in the Lord by my imprisonment, dare to speak the word with greater boldness and without fear. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm in the Lord in this way, my beloved. I urge you, Odia and Sintich, to be of one mind in the Lord. Yes, and I ask you also, my loyal companion, help these women, for they have struggled beside me in the work of the gospel, together with Clement and the rest of my co-workers, whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your gentleness be made known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, Whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, and the God of peace will be with you. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Rejoice in the Lord always. Rejoicing is a key note of this letter. The Greek word that the NRSV translation says as always can also mean at all times. This indicates an ongoing activity, not based on a particular circumstance. You might find yourself a little cynical saying, yeah, yeah, Paul, rejoicing is great when everything's going to plan, when life is normal, and when I'm in control. But all circumstances? Come on, Paul. But remember, Paul wrote these words to these communities when he was in prison. As Sterling said last week, we don't know exactly what that meant, what prison was like in that time, but we can imagine that it wasn't all rainbows and butterflies being held somewhere against their own will. A prison cell is an unlikely post for God's mission, but here, Paul rejoices. He rejoices because he knows that God is still God despite his current state. He rejoices because God is still in control, and he knows that when he rejoices, he points others towards that truth. He exemplifies to us what it means to rejoice in the Lord always. And then Paul addresses the Philippian community. He's heard that they're struggling and dealing with some conflict between them, between these two women as who he's writing to in this instance. And he tells them to stand firm in the Lord and to rejoice always. But he doesn't just stop there. He gives them really specific instructions about how to do this, how to stand firm and how to rejoice always. First, he tells them, do not worry about anything. And this surely would have recalled to them Jesus when he spoke on the Sermon on the Mount. 
He told them, do not worry about what you will eat, what you will drink, what you will wear. And this is really tough. And if I'm honest, this is a really hard thing for me to do, to not worry. But one of the marks of the Christian life is non-anxious presence. Not because our lives are perfect or because we have everything figured out, but because we have chosen to not worry because Jesus has commanded us to. And again, this is not something that happens overnight. It takes a long time of practice, and Paul tells us how we can stop worrying with his second piece of advice. He says, Do not worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. Paul knows that people cannot just turn on a light switch and stop worrying. It is a long process that takes a lifetime of faith to get to. But part of that process is learning to turn our worries into prayer, into a conversation with God as an outflow of our relationship with God. And Paul tells us that when we do this, the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Paul uses the language of rejoicing to encourage and remind the Christians in Philippi that they have a story of faith. They have experienced God's presence in their life, and Paul reminds them of this story and how it should characterize their every day, their mindsets, even and especially when things get really tough. The Philippians, and we today, are people whose lives should emanate this non-anxious presence in prayerfulness. We are people whose thoughts should overflow with whatever is honorable, just, pure, pleasing, and commendable, not because of our situations, but because of the one who loves us and reigns despite what's happening in our lives. By now, you might have noticed where we are today. We are in front of some of the hospitals right here in Mobile. Hospitals and healthcare workers have been on the forefront of many of our minds because, well, we're in the middle of a pandemic. And these healthcare heroes have been on the front lines of this crisis. But even outside of a pandemic, hospitals are incredible places where the full range of human emotions can happen at the exact same time. Think about it. Babies can be born, people receive radiation or treatments, they undergo life-altering surgeries, people have organs transplanted. True miracles happen every day in hospitals, miracles that bring us to the highest height of joy and excitement with God. And on the other end of the spectrum, people get sick and have serious health scares or take their last breath within walls like these. Healthcare heroes know more than most that life circumstances can change in a heartbeat. Certainty can go out the window. Normal can become abnormal. We have all been reminded of this sobering reality over the last 10 weeks. We have experienced a worldwide valley of sorts with the pandemic, the loss of jobs, people filing for unemployment, countless plans canceled, and disappointment after disappointment. But as Christians, we are charged with not letting the ebbs and flows of everyday life take away what we know to be true, and that is that God is with us, and we are never alone. And we have hope in life beyond this one, in life beyond what we can see right here. And this hope, it's not a fleeting thing. It's not false optimism. It's not fake it till you make it positivity. No, we have hope as a sign of our faith. We have hope that God is bigger and stronger than even the worst thing we can experience in this life. Author and theologian Kate Bowler recently said, Hope is a sign of God's presence. It is about the belief that the story of God in the world is a story about us now and the future. God is pulling us towards something greater than we could ask for or imagine. We hope, knowing that God is working on the restoration of the world. Life after death, when we are all made whole, that is Christian hope. Hope does not mean that we should pretend to never feel sad or frustrated or angry, especially when we see injustice in the world, because those are totally normal human emotions. But following Christ means that even when we get down, sad, and frustrated, we still have hope, knowing that God is with us. 
When we have reached rock bottom, we know that we have hope that this is not the end. As our youth director, Leanne, reminded us last week in our eight graduating seniors, God is with us on the hills and when we are in the valleys because God is Emmanuel. And that is why we rejoice in the Lord always. Throughout our lockdown, we've been making midweek devotional videos, and I've had a lot of fun with this, reaching out to many of you, families in our church, those connected with Ashland Place, and asking them to send in a video answering a question or singing a song. The question I asked this week was, where have you seen God this week? The answers ranged from, I've seen God in nature, to I've seen God through wearing face masks, I have seen God through hot dogs, through giving of a community, it's a wide range that shows the diversity of God and the way God shows up for us in our lives. But possibly my favorite video that was sent in last week was from the Moore family. You know them from around the congregation, Josh and Emily and their three kids. You have raised them, you have known them, and they sent in a great song for this week. The song is called, My God, and the chorus says this, my God is so big, so strong, and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do. And at the end of each little chorus, Ann Redding looks at the camera and says, for you, as a reminder that this God that's so big and so strong and so mighty is for you, and for you, and for you, and for all of us. It is a really cute video with a powerful message about who God is and how God acts in the world. Our God is bigger and stronger than anything we encounter in this life, the heights or the depths. Songs like this one help children learn about God and our faith, a faith that says no matter our circumstance, God is bigger and stronger. There's nothing our God cannot do. And friends, while it is week 10 of social distancing, it is week six of Easter. We are people that celebrate that Christ is risen from the dead breaking the chains of sin and death that separate us from God eternally. Because of the incarnation, the life, the death and resurrection of Jesus, we have hope. Though we are living with tremendous uncertainty right now, we can exist here faithfully as we rejoice in that hope we have in God. Not because life always feels certain or happy or secure or good, but because we have hope knowing that God is with us and that changes everything. We hope knowing that God is still working, that beautiful things are still possible. We acknowledge that our world is not heaven, it's not exactly how it's supposed to be, but we hope because we see glimpses of God all around us. So whether we are on a hill or in a valley, whether we are at home or in a hospital, in person or online, God is present, God is with us. So let us rejoice in the Lord always as a sign of the hope we have in the risen Christ. In the name of God, our creator, redeemer, and sustainer. Amen. And now as people of faith, let us affirm together our faith with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Thank you again for choosing to worship with us this morning in this virtual world. Uh, we are going to be continuing our virtual opportunities and, and virtual only through the month of May and into June. We will keep monitoring the situation and we'll offer our face-to-face -face, um, worship services as soon as we possibly can uh, with attention to care and caution. So just wanted you to be aware of that. So we look forward to seeing you again next week um, here in this virtual world. Our hymn of invitation and commitment is number 472. And so together let us sing near to the heart of God.
Receive now this benediction. May you go wherever you are, rejoicing in the Lord always because of the hope we have in Jesus Christ. Go in peace. Amen.